So at one point during my detailing career, I had a rather large collection of things, of items, pads, liquids, towels, machines, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to show you now the, rem the final remnants of what I once had. And first of course is the pads. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the pads as well. Um, so here goes. Alright, so first up, Buff and Shine, USA. Um, I had the company send me all of these for free to me. And I really love this pad. Not so sure about that one. That one's nice, which is the finishing microfiber. Better than this one, I find. This one feels nicer, but I simply cannot get any polish to film up on the surface and actually stay wet. It just seems to disappear on any machine. I just can't get it to work. It's probably me, but I actually prefer this one. Um, I really like the Eurotech and the Eurocell line. The Eurocell line here is my personal favorite of their lines um, this is this is a particular one and obviously the buff and Sh uh, Lake Country had the have the Hydrotech this is a Hydrotech Crimson a very very old one it was darker once this has been used on trim for about 10 years so it's still going but I really love this one I really really enjoy this on force rotation beautiful pad um, I really like these now the trick with foam pads especially and pads in general is to keep them clean as you're working. And this is not a lecture on that. <laughs> I'm not the one to say really what to do and what not to do, but just a few little things. Um, obviously these are closed cell, and closed cell foams take longer to dry if you, if you wash them and get them wet than with conventional, with your uh, open cells. I prefer closed cell though for some situations and uh, really enjoy those pads. So we've got some Rupes here. Rupus, sorry. Um, obviously the thin ones. I like these on force rotation and on random orbital with a long throw, 15. But not all the time. I'll have the other ones as well. Here's the Lake Country um, HDO line. 5 inch. This, these were actually used by a detailer I know and who's really, really good. Uh, he's, he actually let me have these ones after he used them a fair bit. These are newish. And of course the those and the foam walls and all that stuff. The Kosh Chemi line, love this particular line of pads. The red one is fantastic on quite hard paints, white paint. Um, back to the Rupes again, this is the newer line, the DA Fine, medium coarse, all that sort of thing. The rotary line and the force road, uh, sorry, rotary line. Then we got the brand new one step foams from my awesome company, the, the awesome company that I deal with in France. What you see here is not a true representation of the actual colour. It's just a typical, I suppose, green. Not a forest green, but a lot of green. But on camera it always looks like it's aqua or something else. But it's beautiful foam. Uh, right, oh, some orange ones from them as well. Some Zvisor, Zvisa. I love these um, CarPro gloss pads. Beautiful on rotary and force rotation. Also love these. This is the um, Kamikaze Rosso Red and the Black. And my personal favourite foam from Germany right now, the Shell Concepts uh, Honey Spider. Brilliant pad for a lot of things. It actually has corrected the paint, the swell marks and minor scratches on this paint. And this paint's medium to slightly medium hard. So... Pretty impressive what it can do. Yes, it's not a cutting pad. Yes, no, it's not a light cutting pad, but it's somewhere between intermediate and finishing and ultra finishing. But it's just really good. Red one, of course, the Ninja. And then we're moving on to a couple of personal favourites. This is the Flexi, Flexi Pads Viper and X Slim line. I don't use their other ones. The orange pad there, it still works, but. Um, I find the pad, the foam actually is really good because it softens, so it's good for a one step, but then once you've used it on half a panel, it's useless because it's too soft. Um, the black, This black foam is absolutely luxurious, probably the best black foam on the market today. Uh, it is ex immensely soft, it's velvety, it's beautiful, um, better than, I, I think better than 
probably all the Lake Country Blacks and the Buff and Shine Blacks, I reckon. Uh, it's absolutely superb. However, they had some Velcro issues at the time with this part and with this part. That's all been fixed now. This was back. This is the original cop version when they released that about five, six, seven years ago or something. Uh, ivory pads, 110 paw per inch. I love these ones. Second, the second finest ever foam pad, 110 paw per inch. This is the uh, DA version. That's the XLIM. This is your um, Vipers. Then the rotary version. Love them. Brilliant, res brilliant results on those. Now these are my personal favourite pads of all time. The Gekatex Blue 50 ST20s. The Universal Foam. Any machine. Um, let's call it semi-cut or very, very light cut. Intermediate uh, polishing, heavy polishing, semi-finishing. All in one. Absolutely brilliant foam, and no, they're not a copy of Lake Country. This is the original. Um, brilliant foams. Uh, what you'll see with the SDO line is very, very close to that, if not the same. Uh, right, I have some German foams from a guy I knew, Sebastian. Not bad, the yellow ones are quite nice. There's some Lake Countries here. Bit of a selection of wool, those being the pinnacle. These are the best on the planet right now. The, um, the D-Bird wool, Aussie wool with no hooks, no barbs at all. Laser treated, love them. Some microfiber, but sure buff one down the back there, back there, and of course rayon and your um, velvets and a few other things. I've got some other ones laying around, but um, they're at the workshop right now, like the Lake Country um, curved edge rotary pads, 7 inch. I quite like those too back in the day, they were good. But yeah, there's a lot of other ones around. Um, I like a lot of them. Uh, I like shoal pads more than I like their liquids. I don't use any of, the, any of the liquids. I don't rate them. Yes, will they work? Will they get the job done? Yes. But do they film on the surface and and work how I like and not solvent based? Unfortunately not. So if it works for you, man, go for it. But it's just not for me. It's too dry. It's too it's too white on the surface. It's not a perfect balance between water and o watery and oily lubrication which I prefer and something that films up and never turns to string or balls balls of polish when you um, are working uh, probably because it doesn't have any naphtha in it uh, righto or glycerin or whatever else montanic acid ester and all the other crap okay but yeah this is what I've got left as far as pads go next video I will do about my liquids oh I forgot about these guys this is a company in Korea called IPO, and um, they make some pretty decent polishes actually as well. Um, the only thing I didn't like about these ones, this is brand new, um, but what I didn't like about these ones was that, um, when they were sent to me, was that, um, well the ones I've used at work, which were obviously brought in for us, um, they... Uh, the Velcro tends to fail quite easily, reasonably easily after maybe three or four uses. It's, and it actually goes out of shape. I don't know why, but it does. I know one way, one way to make foam, uh, foam pads go out of, lose their shape on an orbital. Well, that's basically having the machine running and spinning the pad while you're blowing it out with air. Um, but I don't do that. I spin it with the machine off and make sure it's a perfect circle, or I put it on a rotary and do it. But yeah, they, they're, they're decent. Um, they're okay. But uh, there you go, guys. Just, just what's left of my once massive collection of pads. <laughs>